Now on our next transformer connection will be in section 3-6. Our unit will be block 7, unit 6E, transformer connections YY. So we're going to have a YY connection here. Now, with follow along on your step-by-step -step instructions in your information sheet, and I'll diagram this out for you. The first step is, of course, to diagram our feeder. And our feeder here is 4163 phase 4 wire. We know the phase-to-phase -phase value is 4160. Because it is a 4 wire, we know it is Y. We have a scale 240 volt. We know that each, because we have a Y diagram here now, we know that each of those vectors will represent 2400 volt. Now, where I got that 2400 volt now, my phase to neutral value on a 4160 system, I divide 4160 by 1.73. That means each vector to my neutral now will be 2400 volt. Okay, if I divide 240 into 2400 volt, it will go in there now 10 times. I have 10 eighths, which would be an inch and a quarter. I'll have an inch and a quarter vector for each of my phases. So I'll go through. We'll measure those out. I'm going to mark this for 2400 volt. That would be the easiest way to do this. Okay. Now, my vector, use my crosses to make it easier to draw my vectors in there. And then we have our vectors. Okay. Now, label them for phase. A, B, C, uppercase letters, my neutral in the center, I ground the center. Now we've got our phases, and we know that each of those now vectors represent 2400 volt. Between my phases, my, my system voltage is my phase-to-phase -phase value, I would have 4160. Okay, now to go over to step number two, we will label the the voltage is phase to phase. We'll have 4160 all the way around now. Okay, phase to neutral. All the way around again, we have 2400 volt. Now, those are the voltages that are available on the high side. We're making three phase transformer connections now. And in all cases, we're putting the feeders up above. You'll see when we uh, maybe get into open Y connections, we're still going to put all three phases in the neutral if we have a Y system up there. So you're, you're going to have a, this is the system we're building from. In step number three now, we have to indicate the voltages available. Between our phases now, we know we have 4160. In phase to ground, we have 2,400 volts. Okay, now let's go to step number four. Now, in step number four, we want to label. We want to label our terminals, and we know from the rating of our tub, the capacity, and the coil voltage, both of them being under the parameters you see for a subtractive transformer. We know that this transformer has to be additive, so we'll label it. We'll have H1, H2. On the low side, we'll have X1, X2, and X3. Okay, now let's go to step number five. Now, in step number five, we want the primary coil voltage. And we can see by the rating here that we have a transformer which is rated for a, a Y or a delta. It says if we have 2400 volt system, connect delta. If you have 4160 system, connect at Y. We have a 4160 system on this 20, 20 uh, B transformer connection. So we want to have, so we will have 
2400 volts applied across that transformer. Okay, now we know that that we have a coil voltage of 2400 volt and uh, what our rating is we know then that we're going to have to go to step number six now and draw a primary diagram which is Y. Okay, let's go to step number six. Okay, on our primary diagram now, we know we want a Y connection. To satisfy the voltage on the high side of that transformer, I need a Y connection and that the coil voltage is going to be 2400 volts. So if I take 240 volt, which is what our scale is, take 240 into 2400, I'm going to have 10 eighths again, or one and a quarter inches. So let's draw our vectors in there according to scale. We get our vectors in there then we can label. We're going to have to use a little bit different procedure now. When we have a Y, a Y, we want to use a different procedure when we when it comes to to labeling for polarity. Okay, high side, that means we use uppercase letters A, B, and C for our phases. A YY connection, we know we're going to have a Y over here on the low side. We know that we're going to have a ground on both sides. Both sides, both Ys are going to have a center ground on that. So we would have our N in here, like that. Now, we can label our transformers, one, two, and three but until we get our low side vector relationship drawn out and our polarity drawn in that side we can't put our polarity in the high side now that's true when we have a three bushing transformer now we have to parallel the internal connections on the low side of our transformers to get 120 volt out of them and I'll go through that procedure in a little bit up to now, just take my word for it, that we're not going to identify our polarity on the Y high side until after we draw in the polarity on the Y low side. Now, I'll, I'll explain that later. From this now, let's go over to, to our step number, number seven. Now, if you'll notice by your step-by-step -step procedures that when you get to seven, you'll leave it out. You'll leave it out until a later time. So let's go on to step number eight. Now, if you'll notice on the low side, the secondary rating, we want 120, 208, three phase, four wire. The numbers tell us what kind of a connection we need. We have 120 to 208, that means we want a Y connection on the low side. Okay, now, when we Y connect a three bushing transformer, we want a Y connected so we get only 120 volt out of that transformer. This is an additive transformer we know that we want to use bushings on the low side X2 and X1. Okay. Now, to do that then, I want to draw A and C to X2, B and D to X1. Now I'm going to I'm going to have no connections made to X3. We won't be using X3. We'll ground out our tub Okay, now we know we want a standard connection. The standard for the YY would be zero degrees. We'll have a zero degree displacement. Okay, now 
It's important to remember that we're on a three bushing transformer that the X2 has to be on the inside of our diagram for the low side connection. Now, if we had a two bushing transformer or if we had a four bushing transformer, it doesn't make any difference which one has to be inside. We wouldn't have had to held off connecting our high side of our connection if it had been a two bushing or a four bushing on the low side. Okay, with all this in mind now, let's go back to our diagram, or our step number nine. Okay, now we know on the low side, on our secondary diagram, that we're going to have a Y connection. And that the vectors are going to have a value of 120 volt. And that it's a zero degree displacement. That means that our phases aren't going to change position. They'll be right in the same place. So I'll draw a Y that'll look just like the high side and each vector will represent 120 volt. Okay, now our scale is 10 volts is equal to 1 eighth of an inch. So when I draw my vectors now, I want to draw an inch, I want to draw an inch and a half vector, which would take me to about that point right there. We'll have an inch and a half representing 120 volt. Okay, now we'll come up here 120 degrees around our diagram represent 120 volt as well. Okay, now we'll have We'll put our phases in there. We're on the low side. Now we'll use lowercase letters. A, B, and C. The phases stay in the very same place. We know that we have to ground out both high and low side when you have a Y, Y. Okay, we'll put our lowercase N over here representing our neutral. Okay, now we know that this is transformer 1 from our high side. This is transformer 2 and this is transformer 3. Now we know that we always want our X2's on a three bushing transformer the X2's have to be inside. This is for standardization. One of the reasons that you only use X2 and X1 on that transformer is that when you go inside to a transformer like that and connect up for 120 volt and use X2 and X1 if you should accidentally, say, take this transformer out of service, put it on the dock, and not, not put it back to series, and then, say, install it in somebody's service. Same as maybe somebody wants a single-phase service, 120, 240-volt service, and you install that transformer in there. You will not do any harm to that service. It's just that one side of that line will be dead. In other words, they'll have 120 volt on one side and the other side will be dead, so you can't hurt anything. If we use X1 and X3 for our 120 volt, you see, then you may install 120 volt on somebody's 240 volt service and of course you can do some damage. So, so it's for safety that we're standardizing on the internal connections and, and using only X1 and X2. So just make sure you remember that. Standardize and always use X1 and X2 on a three bushing transformer. Of course, on a four bushing transformer, all your connections are made on the outside. When we parallel that, we'll use X1 and X4 for half voltage. That's no problem. People can see that. Now, we've established our polarity here on the low side. Okay. Now, what we can do, we can go back to the high side and then put our polarity in at this time. Okay, now we can put our polarity to correspond. Now you see transformer number one on the low side, we've got that going east. That means on the high side, it has to go in the very same direction. So that means we're going to go H1 to H2. Our H2s are going to be in the center. On the high side, it doesn't make any difference which one is grounded. It could be either. So 
but on the low side it does in this case. Okay, now then we'll have all our H1s on the outside and our H2s, all of them in, this, in the center and grounded. Okay, now let's go to our next step. Okay, now we can go back to step number seven and make our high side connection. Let's first ground out our tubs, make sure those protective grounds are on there. We've got all of our H2 terminals now, H2 bushings. We've got all of those grounded, so we'll install those connections. Then transformer number one goes to A. Transformer number two goes to B. Follow along on your own diagram. And then transformer number three, H1, goes to C. Then we have our high side connection made. Okay, now we can go back to our steps. We'll go back to the order and we'll take step number 10. On step 10, we want to indicate the voltage that are available line to line. Now here we can use our three phase constant. We know that we have 120 to ground. On our three phase system then, if we multiply that value by 1.73, we'll have the phase to phase value, which would come to 208. So be, from, from line to line, we'll have 208 volt. Now phase to neutral on all of them, we'll have 120 volts. So we'll put 120 on all three of those. Okay, now we can go to step number 11. On step number 11 now, here we have A to N, we have 120 volt. B to C, or line to line, we have 208. A to B, 208. From B to N, we have 120 volt. And from C to N, we have 120 volt. Now we can connect up the low side of our transformer bank according to our diagram. And you want to follow along in your diagram. We have all of our X, our X this is additive transformer, so our, we're using, uh, we've paralleled and we're going to use X1 and X2. There isn't anything tied to X3, to X3. All of our X2s are brought down and grounded on all three tubs. X1 on transformer 1 goes to A phase. Transformer 2 goes to B phase. And transformer 3 goes to C phase. Now we have our transformer connection complete. And we'll move on to the next one. 